Oh, hey, I didn't see you over there. And I'm guessing you probably didn't see the gun I was shooting either. It's where my dish soap camo paint job. And I thought I would just do a little, little uh, review, one year review of how this paint job, this rattle can job is holding up. Uh, ever since I released my how to dish soap where I paint this gun, a lot of people have been wondering how, how the paint job's been holding up. And you know, it's, it's been holding up great. And a lot of that has to do with the clear coat. Um, we'll get into that. I think I'll also do a just a review on the KS-47. Um, if you want to just see the review of the gun, you can skip ahead. But uh, let's get a few more shots on. Now it shoots very smooth now. I uh, installed a, an adjustable gas block along with a better trigger. I'll go over that too, but this is becoming my favorite gun to shoot lately. And yeah, it's just a fun gun to shoot. It shoots my favorite 762 by 39. And what else about this gun? It's just a weird, it's that red-headed stepchild that you just don't mind taking to the ball game. You know, you buy your son a hot dog, you'll probably buy the red-headed stepchild a hot dog. That's what this gun is. It's weird, it's a mix of two worlds, but I think it deserves a little respect. And the funny thing is too, the only place where the paint came off on this gun is on the <laughs> is on the rubber on the uh, pistol brace. But everywhere else, man, even on the high wear areas like the grip, it's all there. The only places where it's actually come out some, just you know, around the mag well a little bit and a charging handle, but I mean, I always run this with a sling. I'm usually wearing a plate carrier at least half the time. So it's rubbing on shit. I don't baby this. Uh, the barrel has changed color. That's about it too. People were saying, oh, the paint will flake off the barrel. Nope, it's still on the barrel. Even the gas tube. The gas tube is, if you can see, just a neon yellow almost. But yeah, the clear coat. I love the clear coat. You're not going to get that battlefield worn you get from other, other rattle can jobs. Some people like that. But if I like my camo, I want to be able to keep it the way I like it. And... I like this and just like the finish of the uh, clear coat just feels good. It's hard to explain, but you know, if, you, if you're holding on to old spray paint, you can kind of have, not gross, but it just feels, this just feels nicer. It feels finished. Um, no, I still love this paint job. And obviously, you don't know if your chamber's empty. So, you know, that's a, just one of the one of the annoyances from the, the AK world that transitioned to this gun because it takes regular AK rounds, mags. So that's a huge plus. If you already have AK mags, it's gonna take most of them, not all of them, but it takes all the P mags at least and it's taken about half of the steel uh, steel magazines I have. Um, 
I know the Croatian, yeah, or I think it's the Croatian ones I have that work well with it. I have tried the last last round bolt hold it in mags, AK mat, AK mags for this. It works. I just don't like using those. Um, I mean, it is nice because it does tell you right away when you're empty, but reloading is a little trickier to me, for me at least. But you do have that uh, uh, lack of recoil, or at least lack of the second half of the bolt traveling to tell you it's empty. Oh, I broke my stand, my target stand. So I guess I'll stop right now. Stop with that to go over, go over this gun a little bit more. So I waited a little bit for the can to cool off. Took that off, and uh, just to just to show you just how it is without a can on. Because imagine most people don't have a suppressor. I waited way too long to get my suppressor. Highly recommend it. I should have. I should be waiting for a couple more, but I've just been dragging my feet. Still need to get a nine mil first. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll shoot this some, and first I want to see where my injection pattern is without the can. Um, so it should be softer. Let's see. Yep, yep, it's softer and a lot louder. I'll shoot this way so you can so you can tell. Try to be perpendicular to the camera. Yep. Oh, you know what? That can't cycle all the way. I've been shooting this with a can so much. Um, anyway, it didn't, the bull didn't go far enough to catch the next one in the magazine. So, I can go over that real quick because one of the things I added after a better trigger was an adjustable gas block. And this is Paul Meadows adjustable gas block. It just barely fits in there too. This is a skinny handguard, but it's low pro profile enough. It's like butted into that a little bit. Um, let's see. Guns empty. All right, got a little Allen wrench. And what I can do is there's a screw in here that opens and closes the port the port opening into the gas tube whatever the correct terminology is so i want to open it a little bit so lefty lucy yeah one two i'll do three And with this uh, adjustable gas block, there are two, two set screws. It was kind of confusing to figure out. There aren't the best instructions. But one set screw on the back here holds this set screw. And that set screw puts pressure on the adjustment screw. And that way the adjustment screw doesn't... Um, kind of wiggle out or screw out under under use so anyway that can be confusing because if you try to force it or try to force this you're going to end up stripping something so let's put a mag in and see if it's going to cycle one two three yeah i'd say that worked yep we're loaded or cycled that went right about four o'clock so that's perfect i don't even want to try to tune it anymore 
And I, really, I don't really want to shoot it like this anymore. Because I got this big old brake on here. And that shit sucks out of a ten and a half barrel. Um, anyway. I'll shoot a little bit. But damn, this shit's loud like this. With the flash hider, it's not too bad. Eh, that was enough fun. I think I'll put the can back on for some more fun. Or a higher quality of fun. This is my Yankee Hill Resonator K. It's a small guy, 30 cal. So I use this on this gun and my uh, regular 5.56 AR. And uh, definitely helps. Let's make sure our, uh, so just for comparison, I'll shoot perpendicular to the camera. We'll see the ejection pattern with the can on. All right. That's a little forward. Just, it's about 230, 245. It's pretty good. Shoot a little bit more. So that leads me to my biggest complaint is the no last round bolt hole open. And I mean, that was a shit reloading. I didn't lock it good. You gotta lock it good. Um, but really it's just uh, using the charging handle. It's a different skill to get used to. I mean, the easiest way, yeah, just use your right hand. But, you know, the tactical cool boys will tell you, keep your right hand, keep your right hand here and don't hit your ejection, your mag eject, mag release. Um, so, and this does use a, an AR-10 buffer spring. So it is tougher to pull this back, especially one-handed. And like you just saw, I kind of struggled on that. If you're not going straight back, you might get hung up. Um, something I need to try is putting in a regular AR-15 buffer spring in here and just see if I can make sure to tune it the cycle fine and still just be easier to rack back. Um, let's try that again. A little better. The mag stayed in. One R one. Why would you want to buy this gun? I think a big reason would be you love the AR platform and you also love the 762 by 39 round. I think that's kind of where I fell when making the decision to buy this gun. I was just already pretty familiar with the AR platform and I was just getting started on the AK platform. So I already knew I loved the cartridge and that's kind of why this gun stood out to me. Another reason is because it is an AR, you have tons of AR-15 parts that you can use on this gun. 
um, anything including like your stock buffer tube pistol grips your trigger gas tubes gas blocks um, anything that's not related to the bolt carrier or the bolt um, should work for the most part um, with that said I would buy an extra extractor if you bought this gun just in case a good reason used to be it was just cheaper to shoot but that's not the case right now or recently I mean 762 by 39 is a lot of times more expensive than 223 or 556 that's crazy I know but uh anyway you can use your AK-47 mags, at least most of them. And that's just going to save you money because you won't have to buy any special AR mags that uh, that take 762 by 39 And you do have to have a trade-off. You don't get a last round bolt hole open. But to me, part of the aesthetic of this gun was that it did take AK mags. That was just a big cool factor to me. Perfect. All right, done shooting for a bit. I forgot to tell you the first thing I up upgraded was the, uh, the trigger. When I first got this, I was getting, like every 20 rounds, I was getting a failure to fire. So basically, I knew it was most likely a uh, light primer strike. And I knew it wasn't the ammo, because the ammo ran just fine in my uh, other AKs, my real AKs. And so anyway, I found a trigger. This does take AR triggers. You can't use a drop-in trigger because there's a spring from the uh, mag release that sits on the bottom of the receiver. I heard you can make a drop-in work if you kind of just file or dremel a little notch or groove um, but anyway i got so i got an an a alg trigger that came with a heavy heavy hammer i'm pretty sure yeah hammer spring a uh, heavier spring in the trigger so anyway that just got rid of that problem completely haven't had any failure to fires um and it's just a better trigger it's not great but it for around 50 60 bucks it's it's a solid trigger and so that was the first thing i did and then the second thing i needed to do was fix the uh, extractor the extractor broke maybe after 500 rounds maybe and eh, probably anyway it broke after a few hundred and the weird thing is it broke the first time using brass ammo in this gun after the first shot the extractor broke i don't know if that's just a coincidence i'm sure it is but uh so anyway um paul meadow says the new generations new the new ks 47s do have a beefier extractor uh on them and that's the extractor i got to replace it a beefier one and it is beefier than the one that i broke so so far so good with that and then like i talked about was the uh, adjustable gas block saying rules <laughs> i'm gonna put these on all my ar style guns suppressed or not it just makes the shooting experience so much better this gun is already pretty gassy out of the box um, which kind of makes sense. It's pushing up a, a bigger bolt carrier against a heavier buffer spring. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's gassy out of the box in this adjustable gas block by Palmetto. So far, so good. I, I've only shot maybe 300 rounds through it, but I'm liking it. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoy shooting this gun really enjoy it if i were going to give the ks47 by palmetto state armory a grade brand new out of the box i would give it a c and that's mostly due to the trigger giving 
light primer strikes and for a brand new gun nowadays that's that's really unacceptable but luckily it is an easy fix you can just replace it with an ar trigger or you can just replace the hammer spring for a heavier one and that should fix it i don't know if anyone else had that problem let me know but it sure was annoying when i first got this gun and my other main annoyance with this gun is just the uh the mag release it's big you probably noticed um I, I dropped the mag a couple times and one was just a shitty reload, but the other one I did nudge the mag release on accident. That's no good. Should be an easy fix. I do plan on trimming down that lever some, but regardless, just kind of annoying. And uh, that those are my two main gripes about this gun. Out of the box, minus the trigger, it's it's a good gun. I, I enjoyed shooting it. But the way I have it now with about $150 worth of upgrades, um, I would give it an A minus. Um, yeah, I just got it running smooth. It's a great suppressor host um, the way I have it. And that makes it more fun to shoot. And, you know, it's, it's already pretty familiar. It's got most of the same manual of arms as an AR-15. But... You have to know how to reload um, AK mags, like an AK. And that's that's kind of tricky for some people. And maybe that's why I like running it, because it's it's a tricky reload. It's tricky to to um, get a go- get a good grasp of the gun. And it's it's kind of challenging. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Um, it's also just weird. I'll I'll keep saying that. It's niche, it's weird, it's a mix of two worlds. It's a weird gun for weird people, maybe. And uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend this gun for anyone in the market for something weird or unique like this. Um, If you don't have an AR, or or, excuse me, if you don't have an AK-47, definitely get one of those first. But if if you like both weapon systems and you want something a little different, try it out. I like it. And, uh, you know, if you made it this far in the video, give me a like, give me a subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad, uh, maybe not your mom, just tell your dad, tell your uncle, uh, you know, fuck your stepdad, I guess. Just, just tell the men folk in your family that there's a cool video about this gun. Yeah, who knows? Thank you.